let's just all admit that time is weird. Time is weird. Like, it's so hard to describe just how weird time is. And the weirdest thing about time is that it has an arrow. It has a direction. It has a, a flow to it that space doesn't, right? I, I, I can go left or I can go right. Super easy. I can pick either one. Doesn't matter. I can go forward. Or I can go backward. Again, super easy. Doesn't matter. I can go up. I can go down. Up is a little bit challenging, but that's because of gravity. But like that, but out in space, it doesn't matter. I can pick any direction I want, but I can't pick direction which direction I want to go in time. I must go forward in time. We all must go forward in time. It looks like time travel into the past is forbidden in our universe. And I have other videos I explaining some examples and how they're forbidden. We don't fully understand why time travel into the past is forbidden. But even without that, it's just like time goes forward all the time. I'm, I don't know how many time puns I'm going to accidentally make in this episode. It's probably going to be a lot. But just time goes forward. Time must go forward. And this is a property of the universe that demands explanation. We can't just let that go. We can't just wave that away and say, yeah, 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 what well, the time goes forward, who cares? No, this is a property of the universe that we must explain. Now it could be, it could be just like a trick of the consciousness, like some game our brains are playing in our heads and time doesn't really act this way. That that doesn't seem right for various reasons that I'm not going to get into because I'm going to paint a physics picture of time. So I, I'm going to assume that time is real, that time does go forward. This arrow of time is not an illusion. It's a real physical thing. That's, that's the game I'm playing. And in this scenario, in this picture, in this worldview, the arrow of time must be explained. So here we are. Time has an arrow. Why? Why does time has an have an arrow? And we, what we do as physicists is look around. Are there any physical laws, any theories, any models, any equations that have themselves a flow of time baked into them where we can point to and say, okay, okay, guys, I figured it out. The reason time has an arrow is right here. Equation 13.4. In this derivation, time appears and time has an arrow and it has a direction. This physical process has a direction, a sense to time that's already baked in, and hence the arrow of time flows through that. Now, time, the, you know, the, the variable time, the concept of time appears all over in physics, like everywhere, but it's just a parameter. It's just a parameter that tells you how a particular system evolves. You can, you can tune it, you can change its value. And so the equations, even though many, many equations in physics have time inside of them, they time appears in the equation, there's no particular arrow to that time. Almost every single physical law that we have, time can run forwards and backwards just as easily. There is no arrow. Time appears. But if you look at, say, how particles interact and the forces that govern how they interact, they can, they can go forwards and backwards as easily as they please. If you look at how gravity, how objects behave inside of gravitational fields, they can, they can go forwards and backwards as they please. So the fundamental rules that govern our universe don't care about time are fully reversible. And yet, that totally contradicts what we see in the world. Most everything we do is not reversible, is irreversible. There is an arrow, there is a flow. You can immediately tell. You can immediately tell if, say, this video were playing backwards. You would just, you just know. If you were to look at some process, a video of some process, or an interaction or a scenario at a macroscopic level, 
you would immediately know. You have an intuition. Say, yep, that one's backwards, backwards, forwards. That one's forwards, forwards, backwards, backwards, backwards. Like you just boom, 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 boom. You wouldn't even think about it. The macroscopic world has an arrow, has a direction in time, but the microscopic world pretty much doesn't. There is this very obscure interaction involving the weak nuclear force that does have uh, an asymmetry in time, but I'm not going to talk about that here except to say we don't think it's very important because that interaction basically is very, very rare, and so it doesn't seem to be fundamental to the universe. Happy to talk about that in another video, and I want to focus on something else. There has to be something in physics that takes us from the microscopic world, which can go back and forth in time as easily as it pleases, to the macroscopic world that doesn't, that is locked, that has a flow, that has an arrow. There has to be a bridge between those two worlds. And there is a branch of physics that provides a bridge, and that is the branch called thermodynamics. Thermodynamics. The description, and who, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that this, be, this would be the one, that this would be our best guess of explaining the arrow of time? Things like temperature in pressure, in volume, in entropy. All this, you know, Carnot cycles and in pistons and cylinders and in, in particles inside of boxes, like raw thermodynamics is actually a way of connecting microscopic behaviors to macroscopic observables. And this is done through the language of something we call statistical mechanics. When we say like, okay, we have a bunch of particles inside of a box, like we fill up, we fill up a bottle with some gas, let's say, for example, and that gas has a temperature and a pressure. Is there something we can measure? Stick a thermometer, pressure scale, you know, whatever. You can measure that. These are macroscopic observables, things you can do on a lab bench that connect to microscopic processes, to the individual motions of particles that we can't see. The countless numbers of particles inside that volume, inside that gas, inside that cylinder, inside that bottle. If the temperature is higher, that means the particles are jiggling around fast, faster at a microscopic level. And if the temperature is lower, they're going slower. The pressure is just these particles hitting the wall, constantly hitting the wall. If there's higher pressure, they're hitting the wall more often, or there's more of them to hit the wall. If the pressure is lower, it's not so much. So you have a macroscopic observable that connects to microscopic behaviors and the technology of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics are what make that possible. So we have the mathematical descriptions of the microscopic stuff of the individual motions of, of particles, and we have the mathematical description of the macroscopic behavior of, of, of the ideal gas law and pressure and all that juicy stuff that we all learned in high school. So that's potentially interesting. Here is an apparatus that connects the micros microscopic to macroscopic world, and the problem of time demands, appears to demand some sort of connection between microscopic processes and macroscopic processes. And this is why we think entropy has something to do with time. Entropy is a measure of disorder in a system. I'm going to do a whole other video just on entropy. For now, we're just going to use that, de that definition. We, the second law of therm thermodynamics says that in closed systems, entropy must go up. Entropy itself is so a macroscopic observable measurement for something happening microscopically. Entropy goes up. Entropy must go up. You Systems must move from disordered to disordered. They must become more chaotic with time. Systems must move into their future. Systems cannot travel into their past. They must travel into their future. Systems go forward in time systems become more chaotic. Is this it? Is that the connection? Is the reason we have an arrow of time 
because systems must go from ordered to disordered, must become more chaotic? Maybe. That's our best guess. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, in my next video, I'm going to dig deeper into this concept of entropy. But if you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe, share, share. make sure notifications are turned on. Go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to help me help you understand entropy and maybe time. I'll see you uh, next time.